Hi, everyone. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I'm Peter, and I'm joined today by Jana and Andrew from the Project Connect design team. And we're going to take you through uh, the downtown section of the Orange Line light rail project. Uh, closed captioning is available in English and Spanish by clicking the CC button or the settings button on the bottom right of the video window. The Orange Line team has established working groups designed to give a deeper dive into each of the project section. Uh, the downtown working group includes both the blue and the orange lines. Uh, and I'll show you the map. Um, the, the boundaries of that working group are Lady Bird Lake to the south, uh, and the Capitol West uh, Government Center Station to the north. North is to the right in this slide. If you're interested in participating in live working group sessions so that you can ask questions and provide feedback in real time, please visit www.capmetro.org backslash get involved to check out events happening now and to sign up for a future working group meeting. We really look forward to your involvement. So the downtown area is uh, interesting because it's really where all of the lines of the larger Project Connect system come together. Um, you've got the orange line coming up from the south um, and then heading up to the north along Guadalupe Street and the blue line coming in from the east crossing the river um, and then into downtown and coming across 4th Street and connecting to the orange line and then interlining with the orange line up to the north. And in addition, you can see the red and green lines coming in from the east um, and they connect to the blue line. And then there are a whole series of bus lines and Metro rapid lines that also come into this part of downtown. So this is the place where many of the aspects of the Project Connect system all come together. So let me walk you through uh, the alignment looking uh, north um, towards the Capitol. Um, and you can see Congress Avenue here in the center to show you how it all comes together. So one of the things that we've uh, discovered as the design has evolved is how important 4th Street is. 4th Street really is the, the core of the system where these lines come together. Um, and I think it also gives us the opportunity to really reinforce the historic connection between Republic Square and Brush Square, which are now connected by 4th Street, and to reimagine 4th Street itself. Uh, so coming in from the east, we have the red line, uh, which uh, on the existing uh, red line corridor with the downtown station. Uh, on the west, the orange line will uh, come under the lake and then come up the uh, Guadalupe Street. The blue line comes in from the east and comes up Trinity Street and then across 4th Street. The green line will eventually come in on the red line alignment. And eventually in a future investment, the gold line will come up interlined with the orange line, cross 4th Street, interlined with the blue line and then head up north up Trinity Street. And the Metro Rapid Expo line comes down from the north and also intersects with the system at 4th Street. And also all of these lines come together into something we're calling the downtown transit hub, um, which is an underground uh, subway system um, where, where all of these lines would connect. And I'll show you how that works. And along that hub, we have essentially four stations um, in addition to the government center, Capital West station to the north. Um, four of these stations, four out of these five stations are underground, part of the subway system. Um, and the, the Congress, the Convention Center Brush Square Station um, will provide a connection from the above grade lines of the red and green lines into the downtown transit hub. So let me go into a little more detail about how this downtown transit hub works. Um, and the goal here is to really create a high, high quality uh, experience of transit, one that can be really integrated into the daily lives of Austinites. Uh, so we have got the Republic Square station on the west side, um, a Congress Avenue station in the center, and the Convention Center Brush Square station on the east. And again, that Convention Center Brush Square station will provide a connection from the surface 
uh, level rail lines of the red and green lines into the downtown transit tunnel. And then we have the Rainy Mac station uh, to the south providing access to the system uh, just south of Cesar Chavez. And the goal here is to design the system so that it provides really seamless and easy access to the transit system for all users and users of all abilities. Um, if we can design for users of all abilities, then we will have done our job well. So this is a cross section through 4th Street. And as I said, 4th Street is really the, the, the key to making this all work. And we are imagining a uh, multi-level transit system through 4th Street, connecting Republic Square to uh, Brush Square in the east. And you can see there are three levels to this system. There's the street level, there's the platform level where the trains are, and then an intermediate concourse level that makes it all work and connects it all together. Um, and the goal of this system, again, is to make the access to transit as easy, inviting, and pleasurable as possible. So creating generous ways to move from the street down to the platform, um, stairs, escalators, and elevators, so that it's all fully accessible. Um, and then to provide really easy transfer between the various lines that come together on this corridor uh, through this underground concourse. And we've looked to precedents throughout the world to understand how to design these um, in the best way possible and really employ best practices when thinking about these station designs. So a few of the elements that we want to incorporate into the system are access to natural light um, so that you don't, you're always aware of, of where you are relative to the street, even when you're underground. Um, long sight lines, right? Clear sight lines between different levels so that you can navigate through the system. And also it really promotes a sense of safety and well-being as you move through the system. And then generous escalators and, and stairs um, and elevators that allow you to move really freely and easily between these different levels. The other thing that's a benefit of having this multi-tier, multi-level system is that we're able to get double height spaces. So the at the platform level, so the platforms won't feel cramped and and um, compressed. You really have this generous station area um, again that makes the whole transit experience really inviting and pleasurable. And a few of the, the, the details of the infrastructure that we're imagining for these stations is um, having platform screen doors. These are uh, sliding doors that uh, protect the platform from the tracks so that when the train is not there, the tracks will be, you can't get into the tracks. Um, and then when the train arrives, the doors will open and then we'll allow access into the trains. And this system also helps with a number of other aspects of, of, of the user experience. Um, one is that we are imagining that these uh, subway platforms are gonna be air conditioned spaces. And so by being able to seal off the tracks and the tunnels, um, we're able to basically maintain that conditioned environment on the platform. And also they provide opportunities for wayfinding and signage so that you always know where you're going and where you're headed and you can clearly and easily navigate the system. So when we think about this multi-level system, we're really looking at how do we basically design it from the street down, right? This is an opportunity to really enhance the experience on 4th Street and to reimagine 4th Street as a new, um, really pedestrian oriented experience. And I'm gonna pass it to, to Jana to talk a little bit more about 4th Street. This is a, a wonderful aerial perspective view of downtown that really highlights the importance of the sort of of Fourth Street as the connector between the historic Brush Square and Republic Squares, as well as the connection to what we often refer to as the main street of Texas, Congress Avenue and the Capitol. And so this um, in much of the planning history um, in, in Austin, we've really thought about 4th Street as the future downtown rail corridor in the, even in the late 90s and dedicated as such. 
and then the advent of um, the red line coming in to terminate at, at Brush Square, which I think we're and the convention center. And then more recently, the downtown Austin plan designated 4th Street as a pedestrian priority street along with Congress Avenue and a few, just a handful of streets, really saying that this that should, should be the top priority is uh, pedestrian access. So that makes it very ideal from, uh, you know, for transit use. In addition, 4th Street has never been a big car carrying street. So we don't have that conflict with a lot of vehicular travel going on there. So that really has set the stage really well for 4th Street to become that kind of ideal transit corridor. You want me to go on? The views today of 4th Street are not as nice as they could be. This is a 4th Street at San Jacinto looking west. And aspirationally, we think of we can start to think about 4th Street as this really wonderful, very verdant, you know, lots of shady sh shade on the street and really being able to carry com with a lot of comfort and ease, a lot of pedestrians and who can make their way then down to the concourse level at any point. This is 16th Street Mall in Denver as an example. Another inspiring example is the Third Street Promenade in Santa Monica, which can operate to carry some limited vehicles, but primarily is um, really kind of their sort of festival street, uh, but it's, it's also a place where transit it can be obtained. Yeah, I think that we've obviously invested a lot in making downtown much more pedestrian friendly. And we have a very, you know, a lot of places, a very active streetscape. And we think that we could really build on those, that work um, and to do something similar here on 4th Street. And it could be really one of the great, great streets in Austin. And also with access to transit, it'll be the most, one of the most accessible places in all of Austin, uh, providing, you know, connections to, to transit, via transit to, to and from, you know, all parts of the city. So just to talk a little bit about how the stations would be located and how they'd work relative to this um, new reimagined 4th Street corridor. We have looking at three stations along 4th Street, three major stations, um, Republic Square Station on the west, uh, Convention Center Brush Square Station on the east, and Congress Avenue Station in the center. The two stations at the, the ends of 4th Street really function as, as bookends to this corridor. And so we're imagining that the stations at either end would be um, really beautiful, inviting pieces of architecture to really mark those bookends and um, signal that the, the transit corridor, the concourse, subway concourse below. So this is a view of 4th Street looking west um, from Trinity Street. Um, you see Brush Square is basically on your right. The convention center is off the screen to your left. The, the current downtown station for the red line is, is behind us, um, but we have this big plaza uh, in this location. And we think that this is a great place to have a kind of transparent um, glass uh, entrance into the subway system um, and really anchors that 4th Street, future 4th Street corridor. Um, so here are some, some precedent images from around the world of, of the, this kind of a subway entrance structure um, that we think we can uh, draw some inspiration from. And there are lots of good examples of different scales and sizes. And so we can calibrate um, Austin's version of this to the, the scale of the place and make it really reflect Austin. This is a, a smaller one from Philadelphia, um, but you can see again, how different ways of, of achieving this, this idea. And then at the Western end at Republic Square, um, we think we can do the, something similar. Um, we're looking at how we can maybe expand the sidewalk um, somewhat so that we can get some additional space where we can locate, uh, again, a, a piece of architecture, um, glass transparent structure that will allow um, access down into the system at the Western end of 4th Street. 
So then in the center of this new Fourth Street corridor, we at Congress Avenue, we are imagining also a new station. And again, that becomes a really focal point of the whole system. Um, there's a existing parking lot at the corner of Fourth and Congress um, that we think that would be a great site for a new uh, kind of central station for Austin. Uh, and it's really interesting to look back at our history and to note that um, we once had a big train station downtown at the corner of uh, Third and Congress. Uh, we actually had two stations serving two different lines. Um, and so while we don't have something like this now, we did have something like this you know, a long time ago. And I think that we now have the opportunity to, to bring that back. And if you look at you know, great cities around the world and around the country all have great train stations. And these are places of civic importance or civic focal points. So we think we have the ability to create a new civic landmark um, in this kind of central location. Uh, this is the Union Station in Denver, obviously bigger site than what we have, but symbolically, I think we could do something that functions very similarly. Um, also, if you look at uh, these trains, urban train stations, um, they often combine other public amenities that make them really usable by the general public, even those who might not be accessing transit. Um, Reading Terminal Market in Philadelphia has a public market in its train station, and, and these are great public uses that, that go really well with transit functions. And this is a more modern architectural example from New York. Uh, again, this is the place where all the, the subway lines come together in lower Manhattan. Um, and so you can see how this is obviously a bigger site than what we have too, but, but it, um, it, I think is a good representation of the kind of architecture that we could create in this location and how it could have a kind of civic presence. So this is a, a uh, sort of a concept. This is not a design. We're still very early days here in the process, um, but at least it shows some of the components that we've been talking about, right? How do you provide access to the transit system um, through a building that would bring in natural light um, down to the concourse level and maybe even the platform level? Um, you know, maybe there are office floors above. Uh, we could have some you know, public uses in this in this kind of corner location. Um, and again, this really strategic location at the corner of Fourth and Congress. Okay, so then moving to the east, we have the Convention Center Brush Square Station and then the Rainy Mac Station. Um, you know, the, the Convention Center Brush Square Station is really critical because it is the place where uh, the red line coming in from the east can on the surface can connect down into the uh, subway system. So this is a so sort of shows how that connection could be made. That would be the location of the future station entrance into the tunnel and the subway. And then uh, going down to the south, the Rainy Mac station uh, on the blue line would allow uh, access basically south of Cesar Chavez into the neighborhoods, um, the really emerging, growing neighborhood around Rainy Street, um, as well as the, the Mexican American Cultural Center um, to the south. And so you can see the, the pedestrian paths on the hike and bike trail um, that would connect to those locations to the south and to the east. And I think um, it's also important to recognize there are a lot of other projects that are being developed in this area. Obviously, the Butler Trail, um, as well as Waterloo Greenway, which will provide uh, new bridges over Waller Creek. So increasing that connectivity across the creek and also, but to imagine that you come out of the subway system and you basically emerge into a garden. And this is the environment that you move through and walk through um, to get to your destination. It's, it's a pretty exciting opportunity. So here's that, the, again, that path network again. Um, with access also pedestrian and cycling access across a new uh, rail bridge um, that would cross Lady Bird Lake and provide access to South Austin. So I'll take a moment to, to talk about the Government Center at Capitol West Station uh, to the north. We are currently looking at uh, three different options for the station. So you can see here the Republic Square Station to the south. So north is up in these diagrams. Um, the orange line would come up, uh, stop at Republic Square, continue north, 
And then, as I said, there are three different options that we're considering. Um, one where the station is centered around 12th Street, one where it's centered around 13th Street, and one where it's just north of 15th Street. And uh, we're evaluating uh, these options over a variety of criteria, um, you know, station location, connection to other services, uh, bike and ped facilities, construction impacts, et cetera. Um, and we'll be weighing all those issues, but this is a place where we really want to get the community's feedback so we can make the right decision about this. So then I'll turn it over to, uh, to Andrew from the Orange Line and he'll take you through the schematics in greater detail. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Peter and Jana. Uh, my name is Andrew and I'll be walking you through the Orange Line schematics for downtown. Um, these are our 15% engineering plans. Um, what you're looking at on your screen here, uh, north is to the right. Um, so you got to kind of orient yourself that way. Uh, we're looking at Guadalupe Street, um, where our tunnel will run downtown. Uh, and this is the very critical part of our Orange Line project uh, along 4th Street, where we connect with the Blue Line project. Um, so what you're looking at here is that connection point along 4th Street. I'll quickly orient you to what our kind of engineering schematics uh, cover. You were looking at the plan view, which is kind of the bird's eye view uh, from above. We've also included uh, what we call the profile view, which is kind of looking at the elevation of the uh, orange line from the side. Uh, and also on these schematics are what we call typical sections, which show kind of how the uh, the train would be integrated with the roadway uh, surrounding it. So I'll, uh, I'll go through our overview of the orange line design. Um, a lot of this centers around where our stations would be and where those access points would be downtown. Um, I do quickly want to mention that uh, getting to this point here at 4th Street, we do cross uh, Lady Bird Lake in a tunnel configuration. We would be going fully underground um, from that tunnel under the river and coming up to this three level station at Republic Square. Um, what you're seeing with the colors here, uh, all of this kind of purple blue color represents where our, our train would be underground. Um, for the entirety of downtown, we are underground. Um, we would be both uh, in a tunnel configuration where we have no surface level impacts. And in some areas, we would have to dig kind of from the top down and have some construction impacts as we build the light rail guideway. Um, so this station here at Republic Square, we're actually just adjacent to the park parcel here between 4th and 5th Street. Uh, we would have certain access points that aren't um, necessarily defined just yet, but we do have some preliminary locations shown on these schematics. Um, one of those access points would be very close to where the park is, uh, and we are anticipating another access point here between 5th Street and 6th Street along Guadalupe. Um, those are very much uh, concept level at this time, and those can be changed as we develop the design further. So I'll quickly go to the profile view just to show what the levels of the station would look like. Um, so we are very deep under the ground. What you see in this profile view is what represents the existing ground elevation. So everything below that represents um, underground infrastructure. So we would be digging down uh, upwards of 50 or 60 feet um, just to you know, have our track level. And then above that, we'd have multiple other levels for station access and some you know, operational facilities that would serve the station as well. Um, we do generally uh, want to have a very level um, you know, even grade for our station platforms. Um, this allows for, you know, passenger comfort as they board the train um, and just makes it easier to construct the station as well. So you do see on our profile, we kind of, you know, climb and, and go up and down outside of the station, but we generally shoot for a relatively flat um, station configuration. 
as we kind of go north from the station, uh, we do kind of start climbing along with the natural grade of downtown. Um, but just to point out um, what this thicker green line would mean, that would kind of represent what we call the station box. Um, outside of that station box area, we would be back in our board tunnel configuration where we'd be tunneling fully into the ground with no surface level impacts. So you'll notice that um, generally in the areas where we um, have our station box and need to do some construction, you know, from the top down rather than just, just kind of tunnel through, um, we are also, uh, as part of this project, um, doing some roadway improvements. So you'll notice uh, on top of what, what is the track level underground, you'll see the preliminary limits of the roadway improvements, which include, um, you know, sidewalk and bike facility improvements as well. But generally that will follow, um, as I was saying earlier, that limit of uh, disturbance at the, the surface level. So as we kind of head north out of this Republic Square station box, um, the roadway improvements uh, would end as part of this project um, as we are tunneling fully underground heading north. Uh, I do want to also point out that we have three options that are still on the table for downtown. Um, the schematic that I'm showing here on my screen is what we call option 2A. I'll quickly just mention the differences between the options and those are all available um, on the schematic uh, in this table where design option locations are listed. Um, the options downtown mainly relate to where the tunnel would come out of the ground. So with option 2A that I was showing, we would uh, come out of the ground with our tunnel portal at around 17th Street on the west side of the roadway. Uh, our other two options, options 3A and 3B, would continue tunneling a little bit further north past MLK Boulevard and come up out of the ground at that point. Uh, the differences between these options, as I'll get into in a bit, are where that next station north of uh, Republic Square will be located. Um, that's the government center station. So I'll, I'll quickly cover um, where that station would be and where the tunnel portal would be with option 2A, and then we'll get to the other two options after that. So we are coming uh, up, up a little bit with the profile around 12th Street. We would have additional areas of disturbance around the station box. Um, our government center station with option 2A here is, you know, centered on 12th Street, slightly to the south. Um, there would be access points um, with this station potentially along 12th Street, as well as on the west side, kind of between 11th and 13th Street. Um, I do also want to point out that adjacent to government center, we do have um, of an additional flat area in the profile and an additional area of disturbance from the top to allow for some operational flexibility for the light rail line. Um, so you'll notice that um, with all three options um, adjacent to the government center the station. Um, with this option, we do have a two level station rather than a three level station. So, um, you know, from a, an access standpoint, we would still have that um, mezzanine level to where you know all pedestrians and users of the system would come from the from the surface down to that mezzanine level, and then because we do have two platforms, um, you know going northbound and southbound, we would have access to both sides of the station box at that level one level down. Um, with this option coming out of the government center station, we would come out of the ground, and I, I quickly want to point out what that means. Um, for downtown, um, where you see on the profile, we have this kind of green line above. That means we would cover um, that portion of the LRT and fill this area back in um, after the LRT was constructed. And there would be no, um, you know, once the project is done, um, surface level impacts to roadway lanes. But you do see on the schematic that we are proposing roadway improvements to go with the project because we are uh, needing to dig down from the top down. 
as we get into this lighter blue um, shading, what that means is that's kind of where our, our tunnel would start to daylight. Um, so we're not quite at uh, the surface level yet, um, but we are starting to climb out of the ground into that surface level configuration. And this would require basically um, some walls on either side of the light rail to prevent any vehicles from accessing that um, that uh, what we call U section coming out of the ground. And I'll quickly show what that looks like just to help you all visualize. So we would have, you know, barriers on either side of the light rail and we would be climbing out of the ground um, up to that surface level. That area um, where we come out of the ground is between 16th Street and 18th Street. We would be at the surface level from 18th Street all the way heading north where we meet up with the uh, the drag concepts. And there's still a few drag concepts on the table. Um, I would encourage you to participate in the drag working group and view that video to understand what's still being considered there. Um, I'll quickly jump to the other options here. So as I was saying earlier, with um, the two other options for downtown, we have 3A and 3B. Um, so where, where with 2A, we had the government center station around 12th Street. Both of these options have that government center station a little bit further north. Um, with this option, we're just one block north around 13th Street. But the big difference with both of these options is that we have a little bit longer of a tunnel and we do come out of the ground uh, a little bit further north past MLK. So I'll quickly show where this station would be. Um, we are looking at different areas of access. Um, these are preliminary and will likely change through the project as it's developed. But currently we're looking at providing access just north of 13th Street on the east side and then just north of 12th Street on the west side. Um, continuing north, we would potentially have an access point uh, adjacent to 15th Street. Um, so there would be some kind of entrance um, along 15th and Quad. And that would be kind of a seamless underground connection to the station, even though it's not directly adjacent. Um, we are heading further north here, and I'll quickly show where we come out of the ground. Um, so just north of MLK, we would start kind of climbing out of the ground in that U section, and we would daylight our tunnel. Um, it's not shown on the schematic, it's just cut off, but just south of 21st Street is where kind of our tunnel would come out of the ground and we would meet that surface level configuration. The big difference between 3B and 3A is the location of the government center station. So I'll quickly show how that differs. With 3B, we are just north of 15th Street with the station. Um, so, you know, a few blocks north of where we were for 3A. Um, we would still have that 15th Street um, station access point as we did in 3A. We would likely have an access point a little bit further south around 13th Street as well. And we're all looking, also looking at providing an access point around 17th Street. So all of those would be kind of a seamless, you know, underground connection to that mezzanine level. Um, but we are able to provide access, you know, not just within the station uh, platform area, but you know, a few blocks either side as well. And this option, um, just like with 3A, would come out of the ground in the exact same point, just north of MLK, we would start climbing out of the ground and we would be at grade by 21st Street as well. 